What's up everyone, welcome back to Just Finished Coding. This is part 7 of our scrolling platformer game series on Scratch 3, so let's get coding. Just finished coding. Now quick interjection here, if you've not watched parts 1 to 6, please watch them before you come here because we're picking up from where we left off and you'll be very lost. I'll leave a card for you right here. Please watch the videos and then come right back. If you're still here, I'm going to assume that you've watched parts 1 to 6, in which case you should have most of your um, platformer game set up and the only things left are the exit positions and uh, also the transition into the next level. So let's get right into it. Before I get into the exit though, I do want to change one thing in the spikes and lava sprite and that is the position of, you know, this third clone number right here. And as of now, I think Scratch automatically centers the costume when you, you know, save them to the computer and then upload them. So as a result, uh, the costume centered when it was supposed to be a little bit higher. So you do need to change these two X and Y coordinates. So as a result, you want to change the X position to be 1018. And uh, you also want to change the Y position to be a little bit up and that is negative 200. And uh, these two things will fix up your uh, position of the lava as well as the adjacent spikes correctly and uh, you should have them at the right spot. So all right, once you're done with that, I'm going to get into the background and um, just for simplicity's sake, I'm going to upload the background which I used in the game I showed you in the preview. And uh, this is actually really simple guys, you can just, you know, draw a blue uh, rectangle uh, around the entire screen and that should work out. But I just like the particular sky blue color that I'd used there, so I'm going to upload it. So background1.svg and there we go. So that is the background. I'm going to call it sky just for simplicity sake. All right. Once you're done with that, now you can get into the code of your, um, the code of your exit. And uh, what I'm going to do is to duplicate the spikes and lava sprite. And uh, then I'm going to remove this entire if touching platformer, then, you know, set player thing to die. And I also want to remove the entire clone creation uh, from both the, uh, uh, basically from all the code, all right? And I'm going to go to the costumes of the uh, Spikes and Lava Sprite 2 and I'll delete everything I can. All right, so this is going to be the costume and now I'm going to uh, actually change all of this code a little bit. So first of all, the X and Y position is not this and what we're going to do instead is go to that last obstacle on top, okay? So I'm going to say go to 1347, uh, yep, that's the one. And uh, my Y position is going to be 435. And uh, I'm not sure if you actually saw the block, but as soon as we get into the extreme right end, or basically at the top where we go up above a slope and jump, uh, if you jump right uh, towards the right enough, then you will be able to see, you know, the last block I'm saying. Anyway, you'll see it when we add the trampoline. All right, so this is the position for the exit position. And uh, I'm gonna change the costume right now. So within choose a costume, click on upload costume and uh, you can choose the one which says exit, okay? And uh, yep, this is our exit. Not the best uh, costume you could have, but I think it works out. All right, so that is pretty much it. Now we're gonna hide, we're not gonna show unless our X position is on the screen and our Y position is on the screen, so that's pretty great. Uh, I'm not really sure if there's even a costume called one, so I'm just gonna say switch costume to exit or you can remove it altogether. Anyway, your choice, I'm just gonna remove it. Now what I'm going to do is to call this exit and uh, I'm going to duplicate this once more. Okay. And this time I'm going to call this exit protection. And uh, once again, our exit protection sprite is going to have pretty much the exact same thing. But instead of, you know, having, I'm actually going to remove that delete the clone. Um, but instead of having this exit costume, we're going to have uh, basically a lava rectangle. So within choose a costume, click upload a costume once again. And um, by the way, I'm not sure if I mentioned it, all the um, files are in the description link below. So you can actually go to the Google Drive attachment and download all the necessary files. So um, yep, there we go. That's our exit position. And you can see that's pretty humongous, but it works out and our exit's gonna be right in the middle. Okay, so once you're done with this, you can change, I think the X and Y coordinates are the same as well, so you can leave them as they are. Now for a trampoline, things are going to be extremely similar. So I'm going to duplicate the exit protection once more. I'm going to call this trampoline and um, we're just going to change these X and Y positions. So the X position for the trampoline is going to be 1260 and uh, the Y position is going to be negative 203. So at the bottom, so when we jump on the trampoline, we're going to be like hit really, really high and we're going to bounce off. 
and you will be able to get into like the exit finally. All right, so once you have that in place, you can change the costume once again and uh, click upload costume and you're gonna choose the one which says trampoline. All right, so that's our trampoline and I'm gonna delete the exit protection. So before I move on, I think it's important to test this out. So uh, let me do that and uh, I will get back into the screen when it's at the end of the video because if I play when I'm recording, things get really, really choppy and I don't want that to happen. All right, so I'm at the end and already you can see that the obstacle is at the correct position as well as, you know, the spikes here. And as we move on a little bit more, you can see that our trampoline is also set up correctly. Now I might want to move this a little bit to the right. So uh, I'm going to change the exposition by probably, you know, two pixels or something like that, maybe three. So now let me just click that and yep, I think the trampoline's perfect now. Maybe one more pixel would do. So uh, yeah, you can change that to be one, two, six, four and negative two, not three. And um, yep, uh, obviously we don't have the jump set up yet. So nothing's gonna happen if I touch it. And uh, the exit put, uh, protection as well as the exit are on top right there. So when we, you know, hit the trampoline, we will be able to go up and uh, get into the exit. All right, perfect. So once you have all of this in place, now, uh, now we can get into coding in the jump of the trampoline. So now head over to the player or the platformer sprite and you want to scroll down to the Y engine, okay? And right before this, um, where's that? Okay, not the Y engine, I meant uh, the platformer engine, okay? So you should be able to see that at one point we said, you know, Y engine, Y well. So right here, I'm instead going to add an if else, okay? And uh, within this if else, I'm first going to check if we're touching the, if we're touching the exit protection sprite, and uh, if we're touching the exit protection sprite, then we are going to set that player died variable, set player died to be yes. So set player died to be yes. And um, if we're not doing that, now we're gonna check if we're touching the trampoline. So I'm gonna add an additional if then. So if touching trampoline, um, touching trampoline, then we basically just wanna boost ourselves. And I just realized I put exit protection instead of trampoline. So if touching the trampoline, um, and then wait a sec, where is that? All right, if touching trampoline, then we will be setting Y velocity to be 50, all right? So set Y well to be 50. So we're just gonna, you know, boost up with an incredibly high Y velocity. And yep, that is pretty much all you need. And uh, that will ensure you, you know, you go up and that's really simple. But as far as our, um, you know, exit protection is concerned, we need to make sure that um, we hide it when we collect all the coins. I mean, that's the only reason I could think of for collecting all the coins. Otherwise, there would be no point of doing that if, you know, there was just an exit. So what I'm gonna do is, you know, within this move obstacle function, uh, not function message, I'm gonna add an if then, okay? So we're gonna say if uh, touching, so if we are touching the, um, uh, not touching actually, if the uh, number of coins that the player has collected is equal to 17. Uh, not less than equal to 17, which is the max number of coins um, Then I'm gonna hide so uh, that's pretty simple not really too complicated But that would work out and uh, the reason I put the collision of the you know exit protection in the platformer sprite is because even when a sprite is hidden it can detect collisions with other objects but other objects can't detect collisions with it so that's a property you need to keep in mind. And uh, because of that, uh, you do have to be a little bit careful with, you know, all of this stuff. All right, so once you've done all of that, now I'm gonna head over to choose a new sprite. Once again, click on upload a sprite. And the sprite I'm gonna upload is gonna be the UN. You can call it a backdrop, but I just think it's better to call it a sprite. Okay, so now when we receive initialize, I'm gonna hide it. Uh, but I'm also going to go to the center of the screen, which is X0, Y0. All right, so go to um, X0 and Y0. So now when we receive a message, then we're gonna show ourselves and that message is going to be when the player wins. So uh, I'm gonna say when I receive and I'm gonna create a new message here. We'll broadcast that a little bit later. So when I receive player wins, um, then I'm going to be sh uh, showing myself on the top of the screen. So you wanna add this go to front layer and then, sh uh, then say show. And I also want to set can move, um, not can move, actually I'll do that in the platformer, but um, yeah, as of now, just have this in place and uh, you can stop all your code. Maybe add in a small time lag of maybe one second and uh, add a stop all. Okay, perfect. 
Now, once you're done with all of this, now you can head back to the exit sprite. And um, now within, you know, this move obstacle, you want to check here if we are touching the platformer or not. So if we are touching the platformer, um, then we will be broadcasting that message. So broadcast um, player wins. All right, that is pretty much it. Now you can head over to the platformer sprite and uh, you can add in a whole, um, a big if then. Okay, so uh, I'm gonna add in an if else. So um, add if else. And here I'm gonna put everything within this platformer engine in the if, okay? And I'm gonna put this if then right here. And what I'm gonna say within this is, I'm gonna say if a variable called can move, which I haven't made yet, is equal to yes. So if can move equal yes. So if the variable uh, can move set to yes, it means that the movement of the player is enabled, so we can move. But if it's not enabled, it's gonna be set to no, in which case we cannot move. If uh, can move is not yes, then we just wait until can move is no, which in this case, it's never gonna happen, but we will stop the program uh, when the script is running, so that's fine. So wait until can move equal yes. I should have probably duplicated that, but anyway. Um, yeah, there we go. This is pretty much gonna be it. And don't forget to add in that variable in the begin function, otherwise you'll get some weird errors. So set can move to be yes, and that is all we need. So once you're done with this, you can go down all the way below to some fresh space and just say when I receive, um, yeah, when I receive player wins, then all I need to do is set can move to be no. And once you're done with this, this is pretty much all you need and your platformer game should work. All right, so if you're testing this out and you came all the way right here, now you should be able to see that when you move into the exit, you transpose into the end screen and there you go, our code ends and we have absolutely no errors whatsoever. And before I wind up with this entire uh, series, I do wanna add one more thing and this is just an empty sprite, okay? And I'm not entirely sure why this works, but as it turns out, when we put that right in the beginning of our code, it just boosted it up so much for me at least. So, you know, I'm not sure why this happens, probably because when we, you know, hit the green flag, you should be able to see some things running around uh, like a yellowish uh, glow or something. And that's because it wants to show us what code is executing right now and what isn't. And I think that's probably what uh, slows our code down a little bit. So adding in this empty sprite at the beginning does boost up your code. So just add it in whatever games you make, regardless of how small or how large they are. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is going to be your entire scrolling platformer game. I initially thought it would be eight or nine videos, but as it turned out, we finished it in seven. So I guess that's very good. If you've enjoyed this game series and you wanna learn how to make more Scratch games, then make sure you click on the video on your screen right here, and that'll take you to a brand new game segment. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.